Hey guys, my name is Crescendo and welcome to the Winter Toad Guide. Now to start things off, I'll cover the way to get to this area. Now this area is just north of the Arceus house on Karend, but the fastest way to get here is using a games necklace, which it should be the fifth teleport and it will teleport you right to the center of the Winter Toad area. The next fastest way is to take a fairy ring with the code CIS. It does require you to have this fairy ring unlocked, however, which means that you have to either have already paid or you need to pay to unlock this fairy ring. If you have not unlocked the fairy ring, I would highly suggest just buying games necklaces because it will be much cheaper in the long run. The other way would be to walk from the docks or to walk from the current teleport. Now, these take a fairly long amount of time to walk from, so I would highly suggest just sticking to games necklaces overall. Moving on with the guide, there are a few requirements, but not many. The main requirement is just 50 fire making minimum, but the higher fire making, the better. Uh, you'll see why in a bit, but you do not need any favor to enter this area and you do not need any quests. A level 3 skiller can do this minigame. Uh, you will not be engaging in PVM, so you do not need weapons or any of that. The Winter Todd is a very dangerous boss. The lair itself, if you die within it, you can return to pick up your items, but you can die in this lair nonetheless. It is a skilling boss, so you will not be using weapons to kill this boss. Instead, you will be using your high level skills or even low level skills to potentially damage the boss and move closer to obtaining your rewards. It has five attacks that are unique to it. I'll go over those real quick. Its first attack is passive damage. Now this attack you will be getting hit by throughout the entire boss fight. It is based on the gear you are wearing and the fire making level you are at. So if you are low fire making you will take higher damage and if you are wearing less pieces of warm gear which you will obtain through fighting the boss and through the loot crates you will also take more damage. There's also another attack called the 3x3 downfall. It can hit a player and the brazier. When it drops on a player, if anyone is within that 3x3 area when it falls, that player will take damage upwards of 40. If it falls on the brazier and you are next to the brazier, it will do the same thing except you will take less damage and it will break the brazier, which you will have to repair using construction, and you will also have to relight. There's another attack that I like to call Firefighter. Basically, it can fall on the Pyromancer or on the brazier itself. Now, this is a different attack on the brazier, as it only puts the fire out, it does not break the brazier, and you will not take damage if you stand next to the brazier when it falls. When it falls on the Pyromancer, the Pyromancer will take damage. The Pyromancer can take two damages, uh, damage hits from the Winter Toad, and basically after that it dies, which leads into the strategies. Now there are two strategies, but I'll only show on screen the one strategy that I personally like. This strategy is fairly easy and has very low requirements itself, but it gets the job done just as well. You will be wanting at least an 8-man team. Of course, you're going to want your tools, so bring an axe of high tier. The higher tier, the better. You will want a tinderbox and a hammer, as well as uh, a potion. You can obtain the tools that I just listed right at the beginning of the boss fight or you can bring them either way, it doesn't really matter. You also want a stamina potion and a decent amount of brews. Uh, you should be able to get multiple kills with four brews, but if you have less people or you're planning on farming points, I would suggest bringing even more as you might take a lot of damage and if you have to leave the room, you lose all your points. You also want weight reduction gear. 
uh, such as graceful but if you've gotten any pieces of the pyromancy outfit or the warm gloves or the torch or the book wear those as they take uh, they cause you to take less damage from the boss itself now I've listed on screen with green circles where the logs are that you will be cutting and where the braziers are where you will be fire making Conveniently, there are four places to cut logs and four braziers right next to them. Now, the best strategy, if you had a team that you were working with and there were no strays, you would all start at the northeast corner and then work your way clockwise and light the braziers together, as this will give you 100 points to start out the game with. Now, after you've done that, all of you would go into separate corners, two in each, minimum, and basically chop the logs and then light the braziers and whenever the braziers break or burn out those people will have to relight them and fix them now there are two strategies as far as farming points go if you're just trying to farm kills so you have a chance at getting the pet you will go ahead and get 500 points and then end the round as quickly as possible so you will want to revive the pyromancers using the potion and herbs that you find on the east and western walls. If you're trying to farm points for more rewards and you're not really caring about the pet, you will want to leave the pyromancers dead as the winter Todd cannot take any more damage once all of them are dead, which allows you to farm points continuously as you are still doing activities within the room. Keep in mind though that you will continue to take passive damage and if you do run out of supplies, like I said, if you have to teleport out, you will lose all of your points, thus making this strategy a bit risky because you have to rely on other people as well as your own ability to stay alive. Now let's jump into the rewards, which I'm pretty sure a lot of you are really excited about. Now, the main thing to note about the rewards is the Pyromancer's outfit and the warm gloves. Just like many skilling outfits, this one when fully worn gives you 2.5% increased experience while training the skill fire making and it also helps you when you're killing the Winter Todd boss. As I stated earlier, wearing pieces of the Pyromancer outfit as well as the warm gloves, the Bruma torch, and the Tome of Fire decreases the amount of passive damage that the boss will do to you. Now for each piece, it reduces the damage by one, so if you were wearing the full set plus the warm gloves and the Bruma Torch, you would be taking six less damage. As well as if you were wearing the Tome, you would be taking seven less damage, and if you're wearing a fire making cape, you'll be taking eight less damage. Now, the Tome of Fire itself acts as basically fire runes in the shield slot. It's kind of like a rune pouch for fires, but you have to give up the shield slot, which is worth it if you're using fire spells, but if you're not using fire spells, it probably is not worth it. You can recharge this tome with burnt pages, which you will also receive from the boss fight itself. Uh, the book requires 50 magic, and it is overall a pretty decent book. The Bruma Torch is an untradeable, inextinguishable light source, and it can be held in the weapon slot. If you have the helmet from the Kandoran Diaries, then this is probably not the best reward that you can get. But like I said, if you are wearing it at the boss fight itself, it will help you take less damage. So overall, it is a very nice item. Now, aside from these notable rewards, we also have some other rewards that you will receive from playing this uh, boss fight through as well. So, some of the major rewards that I've managed to come across have been Saltpeter, Dynamite, Oak Logs, Mahogany Logs, Teak Logs, Redwood Logs, U Logs, Magic Logs, and I'm pretty sure I've also seen willows and maples. There are other rewards as well, such as Renar seeds and Snapdragon seeds. Now these come in varied quanti quantities, but they can come in large quantities, which is the huge part. You will also be able to get U seeds, magic seeds, spirit seeds, 
and I believe there is one other seed that you can receive from this minigame boss fight thing, but I'm not 100% sure what it is because I have not gotten it yet. You can also get uncut diamonds, and you can get various pieces of raw food, and you will also get gold pieces as well, including the Pyromancer's Outfit, Tome of Fire, Burnt Pages, Bruma Torch, etc. So we're about to end our round 5 here, and we get our Supply Crate, which holds... Uh... 4 Renar Seeds and 12 Dynamite. And we get... Uh, 2 Renar Seeds and a Tome of Fire. Ooh! So, both of the items sold. The Pages sold for about 5k each, and the Tome of Fire sold for 1.75 mil. Loot number 7, let's go! Pet inbound! Fuck! 38 gold or 18 raw sharks. Damn it. Alright, let's go, let's go, let's go. Loot number 8. It's fucking oak logs and pure essence, dude. Alright, loot number 9, loot number 9. 6 uncut diamonds, 7.4k. Loot number 10, loot number 10, and we get... Uh, pure essence and dynamite. Rip. Let's go... 13 Addy Ores and 7.1k cash. Redwood Logs, 5. Sharks, 19. This is garbage, dude. Alright, dude. Reward number fucking 13. 9 Snapdragon Seeds. Dude, let's go! Loot number 14 for the... Dude, I just got three U-Seeds. Let's go, boys. <laughs> uh... Oh! Okay, I got the fucking... Loot number 16. 32 U-Logs, 8 uncut diamonds. Alright. Oh, relight, relight, never mind. Loot number 17. Um... Loot number 18, 1.1k points, and we get 1 U Seed, 12 Raw Sharks, 31 Mahogany Locks. Reward number 19 is 1 Renar Seed, 8 Redwood Locks. Loot number 20 is... Uh... What the fuck, dude? Loot number 21... Uh, 18 dynamite, 6 saltpeter. Loot number 22 is... 81 oak logs, 9 saltpeter. Garbage. Loot number 23 is... 11 dynamite, 7 saltpeter. Loot number 24 with 1590 points, and we get... Um, I actually did get four loots. I got 34 teak logs, two U seeds, 20 raw sharks, and six adamantite ores. Loot number 25 with 2,500 points is 10 dynamite, five raw shark, 10 saltpeter, eight redwood logs, seven raw shark, 7.9k. Definitely not worth it. Loot from number 26. Uh, 214 PS and 8 Redwoods. Loot number 27 is... Uh, 10 Eddie or 7 Redwood Locks. Loot number 28 is... 10 Addy Ores and 5 Addy Ores. Loot number 29 is... 399 PRS and 7.8k cash. Loot number 30... Pure Essence and Redwoods. Loot number 31. Warm Gloves and 31 U-Logs. Okay. Loot number 32. 
two you seeds and 14 raw sharks. Loot number 33. Damn, dude. 10 salt peter, 389 pure essence. Loot number 34 is... Three U seeds and seven Addy ores. Loot number 35 is... Nine Redwood Logs, 7.2k cash. Hope you guys found the guide useful and enjoyed the loot. We got some pretty decent stuff and some pretty horrible stuff. But overall, I think the boss is very fun and enjoyable and definitely something fun to do with your friends. So I highly suggest that you go check it out and kill some Winter Todd today.